Hey guys, welcome to Snowbreak Containment Zone and we have here a complete build guide plus a recommendation on who to pair with Katya both if you're, if you're preferring with an offensive support or a defensive support. So first and foremost, we go to her standard skill which is Death Traverser. So this one, if you're not familiar with, so Katya is going to give a stance when she is doing that stance, she she shoots like a machine gun, but there are certain you know um, add-ons to the skill and also penalties to the skill. So it's called Guidance 3 Form. In this form, Katcha cannot move or obtain 15% of all type resistance, which was added as a buff recently, and tactical dodges will make her exit the form. Also in Guidance 3 Form, Katcha cannot restore S energy and and also additionally consume 0.5 energy when S energy runs out, Katcha exits the form as well. And in also in Guidance Reform, Katcha is not affected by changes to rate of fire and she gains increased anti-interruption ability. However, during this period, she shoots uh, her shots have decreased final damage, destructible object damage, and U energy gain. So Again, there are certain restrictions, but you can obviously maneuver around these restrictions once you build up her kit. So in, in Guidance 3 form, this is the last one. Katja's rate of fire varies based on crossbow mode. So normal mode is roughly one single uh, crossbow bolt. And for the other mode, which is special mode, is fixed at a four round per second using death traverser. Again, will make Katja exit Guidance 3 form early, after which the cooldown for Death Reverser starts again. Okay, so these are the the kind of um, limitations. So final damage in Guidance 3 form decreases to 48% of the original value. So from 100 to 48. Damage dealt to destructible objects decreased to 50% from 100 and you energy decreases to 25 percent of the original value so take note if you upgrade these so tactical dodge immediately resets at death traversers cooldown uh when equipped with a frost weapon and not in guidance 3 shot hits restores two s energy only one recovery per shot so take note of that this recovers her standard skill faster moving on to the next we have here support skill so, so our support skill is basically a a frost damage skill and also inflicts frozen as well for three seconds so frost damage and frozen for three seconds if you were able to open her neural skills explosive auto can only be used in uncontrollable state dispel the state the explosion range of Brumal Bolt is going to be increased by 50%. So this is a fine support skill to have, of course. And the last one would over skill is going to be Eloquent Arrow. This is our ultimate skill. So you can choose either to stay in after she does it or switch out after she does her ultimate. But I prefer to do the stay in. So shoots towards the sky, raining down on Guileful Barrage of tracking bolts of the target, inflicting, inflicting one instance of frost damage every 0.4 seconds. This one is a very nice AOE control um, skill to have. So damage uh, instance cooldown of Guileful Barrage decreases to 0.2 and AOE increases by 50 percent each hit by the guileful barrage decreases targets movement speed by 10 percent for three seconds upon hitting 10 times additionally inflicts frozen effect for three seconds so it's going to increase your you know the frozen effect that you have already which is going to be okay where is the frozen effect here Okay, so this is the frozen effect. So once you hit it, when they're hit consecutive, 10 consecutive times with the barrage, then they're going to be frozen for 3 seconds. So that is it. Very nice AOE control skill to have, especially if you are, you know, if you are facing a lot of mobs, especially on the new game mode that we have. So we have the last, um, this is her passive. So they was alignment, legacy cunning for each of Gotcha's shots has a... 35% chance to gain aptitude shots. Shots additionally deal 35% of attack of Kacha plus 200 as frost damage, increasing by an additional 7% 
of attack for each 100 alignment index. So right now I have 5, so that that's a plus 35%, not 5, 500 alignment index. So this adds to her attack as well. So for her weapon, guys, this is Alpine Gentian. This is available in the store, the limited store. So this one is very, very respectable. You don't really need at this point, if you're saving your currency for the next pull, you don't really need to pull for the unique weapon, but we'll go to that later. This one gives you a stack damage on the ballistic damage of the operative. So up to 50 stacks of 0.6%. So that increases uh, the damage significantly, not significantly, but it gradually increases as you go up to the 50 stacks. For, let's go to the recommended weapon, which is um, her, you know, her special weapon, Neptune Nova. So again, this one is the same. It has buffs for frost damage. And attack buffs but this one also increases s energy or um, standard skill energy recovery so this is not present in the previous one so this is decent as well you may get this but again if you're strapped for currency for summoning the 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 four star is actually good as well uh, I kid you not I've been using the four star and I'm happy with it um this one eventually down the line if we could get another crack at her banner probably we could get this if you don't have enough to summon for her special weapon so that is it for the weapon so again this one is available in the limited shop um this is a very good weapon to have we don't have much crossbows yet but we will have more in the future okay so that is it for the weapon so for her logistics it's going to be the one also available in the um limited shop so we have eli squad eli squad is technically built for her it's technically built for crossbows by the way so two officers increase attack by 20 for three officers when equipping Operative shot hits, but it does not crit. Obviously, cross crossbows does not crit. Gain Cyclone Fisher increased frost damage by three percent for three seconds. Max twenty stacks, so another increase in frost damage. So this is going to be up to sixty percent uh, for three seconds. Stacks at twenty. Each hit removes one. Each crit hit removes one stack. So again, you don't have to worry about this because. Obviously, your crossbow doesn't stack. So this is the best logistic for her at this point. I couldn't think of any more um, to have because, again, uh, she doesn't. Uh, her weapon doesn't crit. So this is going to be perfect for the moment, which is Eli's squad. Okay, so for her manifestation, um, more or less, I would advise that you get M1 because M1 is going to increase her rate of fire by 1% up to 25 stacks. So roughly up to 25%. The rest of the manifestations, you can just farm these. You can actually farm even M1 if you don't want to get another copy. That's acceptable. You can actually, this is easier to farm. Uh, eventually, you will have to get this M5. This is one of the important things that she has. So the, this is a plus 165 for her alignment index, which from me, from my point, I am at 500. I can easily take her up to 700 or 800 for alignment index, which is massive. Next up is going to be her Neuronix. So for Neuronix, the priority, of course, would be related to her standard skill. So this is for her Death Traverser Cluster. Tactical dodge immediately resets. Death Traverser, Death Traverser. Cooldown. Next is going to be this one. So when equipped with a Frost Weapon and not in Guidance Reform, Shot hits, restores two. This is what we talked about. Then after you have prioritized the top level for standard skill, go next to your... Um, your ultimate which is pertaining to her ultimate okay so the bottom part of 
the Neuronics. So again, this the priority is based on if she will be your primary DPS. Um, it will be up to you if you're going to get her support as second priority but for me i'm recommending the top and the bottom as priority with the middle one as the last priority for your if you're going to use her as a primary dps okay so we'll start off with a healer which is going to be chen Xing. so chen Xing. As a healer has a lot of, you know, a lot of things to give aside from healing. Obviously, let's go through her um, support skill here. She also gives an increase in standard skill damage by 10% aside from her healing for her support skill. And also, if you can take a look at her weapon, if you want really to gain a quicker amount of U energy, then she has a passive which is incre which increases your um you energy for the whole squad so that is what she gives healer plus other you know other she has some add-ons really so you can't go wrong with her the other one the other healer that i think you should consider would be yao okay so yao is definitely your strongest healer in the bunch if you want to go with pure heals and bigger heals then definitely yao is going to be your uh what they call this your girl for healing so those are your two healers they are technically around your defensive supports another one is going to be let's go with a girl which i haven't used much which is frisha hush so frisha hush Let's go with the details of her support skills. So her support skill is more or less gives you more toughness, gives you more um, damage reduction. Okay, so toughness overall that she doesn't shoot her, you know, her HP so quickly. So th this is going to give her a lot of toughness for her support. Uh, but she also gives you an additional support for her weapon if you are actually equipping strawberry shortcake so when support skill is used deployed operative gains bonus attack equal to uh 17.6 17. because i haven't scaled this yet uh into 80 you know level 80 and there's a few copies for this gun but again my whole point is um what do you call it katya will be given additional attack bonus for 15 seconds so attack percentage for 15 seconds so that is what uh frisha hush gives her next up and the last for your defensive would be series okay so for series obviously she's gonna ha give you shields it's too obvious at least you you um katya we won't be so vulnerable if you want to shoot the lights out then series is your last for your defensive supports moving on to your offensive supports number one for me is actually life wild hunt because of offensive not only on the offensive side but in terms of making sure that your enemies are frozen additional if you are happy with their ultimate with Katja's ultimate you will also be happy with this uh support skill if you are looking for additional free so this also buys you time especially if there are a lot of uh, mobs heading your way definitely if you want to choose this type of support then go for wild uh, wild hunt life okay next up is going to be akasha kaguya obviously for akasha kaguya you have moon halo so decrease in all their type resistance by 24 percent this is one of i think still the top uh what do you call this top uh debuffs in the game very all around and i couldn't you know complain with this debuff uh that she gives so next up is going to be one of the recent favorites that we have is Shadowka Mauxir. So, offensive side, um, she is mainly um, she mainly contributes to a lot of damage, especially if it's a boss. Um, she will really, really help you deal more damage and to scale that damage output 
because of her support skill uh, vein squeezing bind. So again, if you're looking for your support for damage dealing for boss, you go for Maux here. If you go for mob damage dealing and crowd control, then go for life wild hunt. The last one, which is actually um, situational, if you want to increase more of her uh, ultimate energy recovery, then go for test de definitely. She will also help you in um, hastening your ultimate skill uh, energy recovery. Again, don't use um, the multi mode for arrows. The multi mode for arrows is not really that good. Um, it's actually in replacement for the reload button. Sometimes you might forget to click on that. So please be aware that do not click on that. Do not use the multi-mode as frequent as possible. Use the single arrow or single crossbow bolt uh, mode or the normal mode for her shots. Okay, so again, and also there's a fun factor involved in her. Okay, guys, let's do a small run here. Uh, I'm going to be bringing, of course, life for additional, uh, what do you call this? Additional support for crowd control. And let's see how she does it. So this is just a short stage, guys. So as you, her, her standard skill basically is also a, what do you call this? A dodge. It also, what do you call this? The standard skill, or sorry, the dodge actually helps you go through, you know, um, if you remember the a, an opponent that uh, gives you barriers, you can actually go through that using her dodge skill. So more or less, it's going to be very, very nice if you were able to, you know, use those skills um, in terms of going out of those bears. So that is it. A short demo of her skill. I don't know if it's that that's enough. But again, guys, she is a fun character to use. Decent DPS, above average, definitely. And also, I think, one of the operatives that you need to get at this point. So thank you very much for staying this far. Take care. Stay safe. This is The Warden. And I'm out of here.